You better believe if the shapeshifters are gonna transform inside one another with hilarious results, that I'm gonna try even more of them and have them even more compact. I just really hope that this doesn't break my game. Okay, well, we have some units. We have some units trapped in a tank again. Oh my God, there's so many of them. It's like a Da Vinci tank sandwich. I think there's a horse in there. What's up guys, welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. And for today's episode, we're gonna continue taking a look at the new modern and Soviet factions. So long as the game works, I'm not really sure why there are a bunch of items hanging out in the main menu cinematic. The game breaking before you even start playing it is usually a bad sign. Well, so far so good. Like, things seem to be working. Like, in all reality, Tabs breaking is just par for the course. <laughs> like, it wouldn't be an episode of Tabs if something didn't explode. And speaking of exploding, we took a look at the new Bazooka unit last time and had a really hard time finding a unit that could take an RPG to the lips and just shake it off. But you guys pointed out in the comments that I might want to try something a little bit bigger. What if we had Snuffy face off against the bazookas? I'm willing to bet that nobody has ever seen a mammoth fight a rocket propelled grenade, okay? This might be a world premiere. <laughs> they're so excited, they just can't wait to find out if they're gonna get shot in the face and die a horrible death. Okay, um, that's around about what I had expected. <laughs> Kinda tickles. They wore bulletproof vests, but they didn't wear tusk-proof vests. This is what you get for poaching, okay? They deserved it. Maybe the problem here is we don't have enough bazookas? I don't know if this is gonna be overkill, but I really want to see just a volley of shells. I love the fact that they have unique models for everything. This is such a good mod. Like, if I play it in slow motion, we should be able to see all of the little RPGs fly out at these idiots. Oh, it's so good! I mean, they hold them like complete idiots. You're not supposed to grip it from the back like some kind of weird broom, but it's definitely doing something. Uh, the something might be tickles. We weren't supposed to shoot tickle rockets. Oh. Yeah, you don't really want them penetrating and just sticking there. They're supposed to explode on impact. <laughs> this is a problem. <laughs> Man, these guys just can't catch a break. They're such cool units, but they get crapped on so incredibly easy. This should have been just a complete slaughter. I think they were double the price of the giants and one giant died. I think it might have tripped on a corpse or something like that. <laughs> All right, that worked great. You know what, I'll give it up. Okay, kudos to everybody in the comments who pointed out that if you go big with your units, then suddenly all the bazooka booms will be benign. I swear, if this was scripted, it would be funny, okay? But now, I want to try going small. Like, I want to try something against the Juggernaut, because again, this was something that a lot of people had recommended. We tested out the Juggernaut last time, and he's a very unique butterfly, for a lack of better term. But people were curious, how many halflings would you need to take him down? And honestly, I don't know. The halflings are really easy to underestimate. Their fuzzy feet can be overwhelming, but at the same time, the Juggernaut's a really strange unit. It reminds me of the Da Vinci tank, except instead of having a Renaissance painter in a barrel littered with cannons, you've got a redneck with a mayo jar on his head and an itchy trigger finger. <laughs> you might want to start shooting there, bud. You might want to start shooting in that direction. There you go, okay. You got some of them. He's managing to shoot through multiples, at least two. I mean, a, a bullet is usually supposed to shoot through one person, but a halfling is only half, so it makes sense that you could get through a couple. <laughs> However, they're they're getting close. Oh, oh, no, you, you really don't want to let them do that. Again, I'm willing to bet that, that Kevlar is not idiot-proof. They will definitely be able to penetrate. 
and you can't aim down. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. No, no, they're just gonna punch you in the grundle. You gotta, you gotta aim down. <laughs> Drop one of them and then do this. He doesn't have two hands on a rifle, so he's just gonna get tossed around. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that is so stupid! Those of you still wondering at home, 75. You need 75 hoppers to take down one idiot with two guns. <laughs> but I'm curious, would those 75 have an easier time against a flamethrower? I don't think so. I want to say that the flamethrower is... Stupidly overpowered. Yup. It's also like, charring their corpses, which we don't really see in other units. This is probably gonna be a mistake, but I'm gonna double the number of hobbits. Okay, we got 150 of them now. It's gonna smell like a cat fell asleep on a hair straightener, but I gotta know, can you take them all out or will they close the distance? I feel like if I go any more than this, the game is gonna crash. You just can't handle that many units. They don't get anywhere close to him. The flamethrower is just insane. It might just be that the flamethrower is really good against small units, and it doesn't get any smaller than the Hobbit. But what if we try something big and green and mean? Even though he's technically blue and not green. He's got a tree, and he's a hippie. I'm sure he would sell you some green if you ask nicely. Well, we're roasting his nuts by an open fire, but he doesn't really care. I would have never thought that you could buy fireproof hemp pants. Every time I play this game, I'm torn. Like, I want to move on to the next idea, but at the same time, I want to see what it takes to actually succeed. <gasps> like, we torched him pretty hard there, and we're pushing him back. It, it seems like the fire actually stops them from moving forward. Oh. So if we up the number of flamethrowers just a little bit, that makes a big difference. Okay, from one to five isn't a little bit, but you get the point. We also took a quick look at the shapeshifter last time, and we realized that he's kind of underwhelming. It's really cool because it can turn into anything, but for $2,500, you could end up buying a, a hobbit or a flamethrower. You have really no idea. <laughs> but the best way of making it fair is to have it shapeshifter versus shapeshifter. 25 versus 25, what are they gonna turn into? I have no idea. Oh, um, blue team has some problems. I wanna say that that tank just kind of spawned into stuff. <laughs> oh, they got one punch, man, are you serious? <laughs> there is definitely stuff inside of the tank. Yeah, yeah, that's a god. That's a god stuck in a tank. Never thought I would see that. It doesn't matter though, because I'm willing to bet that they're gonna win. They've got an invincible unit running around here somewhere, I'm pretty sure. Unless, no, no, of course. Yeah, I, we already realized One Punch Man can't be beaten. He's got infinite health. Nothing can take him down. And they got a dark peasant. <laughs> they got literally everything going for them. What are you guys gonna do? You, you got Zeus. You got a god killer, technically. It just doesn't really matter all that much. Okay, well. <laughs> Unbelievable. I gotta see this again. Yeah, Neptune is super trapped in there. Who would have guessed that a, a tank just appearing out of nowhere might crush a lady? Oh. You better believe if the shapeshifters are gonna transform inside one another with hilarious results, that I'm gonna try even more of them and have them even more compact. I just really hope that this doesn't break my game. Okay, well, we have some units. We have some units trapped in a tank again. Oh my God, there's so many of them. It's like a Da Vinci tank sandwich. I think there's a horse in there. No. Oh, that is just the worst and the best. <laughs> you poor idiots. What? I, I gotta see, like, there's, okay, there's definitely a horse. What else have we got? Okay, uh, we've got maybe a scarecrow or an executioner. Oh, there's a minotaur. How did I miss you underneath the horse? Artemis was in here? Holy crap, it's a party bus. 
<laughs> is everything dead? <laughs> oh, oh, no, you should be running. You should definitely be running. Okay, then. And once again, they got one punch man. These teams aren't exactly fair. One gets shafted with the party bus and the other gets an invincible unit. One unit that I haven't really tried out much is the shotgunner because we kind of had shotguns and tabs before. Like the pirate faction has the blunderbuss. It's practically a shotgun, okay? It, it might be two-handed. He might only have one longer gun and he's wearing a barrel instead of Kevlar armor, but I want to see if we can make this a Fair fight. Holy crap, they're so much cheaper. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's closer to being fair, apparently. I don't think this is gonna be fair, but then again, I could be a complete idiot. Barrels don't stop bullets. Kevlar armor tries? Huh. I guess in all reality, they're just wearing a vest. You shoot them in the face and it doesn't really help. It's the same kind of deal with the gunmen. We've got these strange, skinny individuals. Don't seem to be wearing any armor at all, but they do have a pistol, a reloadable pistol. Actually, that's really important because the pirates have the flintlock, which is more disposable, really wasteful, a lot of litter on the beaches, <laughs> especially because I can afford so many of them again. That has to be fair enough. Right, I really don't want to get like, 60 versus 10, I'm sure this will be fine. <laughs> Once they release their volley, I would imagine these guys don't stand a chance, right? They decided to wear their pajamas to a duel. I'm constantly thinking that the Soviet faction and the modern faction are the same thing, when in all reality, they're distinct. They've got very slight differences to what should be very similar units. Like on the left, we have the Soviet PPSH, and on the right, we have the modern M16. And I don't know which one is better. Uh, gentlemen, you'll about face. Ten steps, turn and fire. Is this fair? We'll have a nice gentleman's duel. Nope. Just gonna open fire right off the bat. PPSH wins and it's cheaper. Interesting. A 1v1 can definitely be a little lucky. So how about we try a 20v20? If I had to choose which unit I would want to be, it would be the M16, because they're wearing helmets instead of fuzzy hats. But that doesn't seem to help them all that much. Why is the PPSH so much stronger? I don't get it! What if we try the PPSH versus the Juggernaut? I don't think I can make this a perfectly fair fight, but I could tilt it ever so slightly in the Juggernaut's favor. I, I think they're probably going to need it. Okay, that was kind of close. The Juggernauts have like a, a startup time. It's like they have a brain burp and forget that, oh, I need to shoot and spin at the same time. Spinning on its own isn't good enough. I want to say that I've spent entire episodes messing around with the Balloon Archer, but I can't remember if you send up a ranged unit on a balloon, can it fire? I would imagine an archer would have a hard time, you know, you got a balloon and a string through your arm and you can't really aim, but with a gun, you just kind of flail about as we saw with the Juggernaut. <laughs> so let's try it out. I'm gonna put, uh, ooh, M16s might be a bit much, but well, we were a gunman. Just, just a couple of simple gunmen. I can't imagine that the arrows will kill them right away. Just send them up, there you go. Now, can you guys shoot? Go ahead and shoot. I know you're alive, or at least you were. No, you're still alive. They just keep getting sent up and down. They can't shoot. <laughs> I think some of them drop their guns. Yeah, you should probably hide your face in shame or dab. It is a dab. Yeah, that arrow went through the part of his brain that's responsible for making good decisions. Hold on a second. We've tried just about everything against One Punch Man, and we've come to the realization that he just doesn't take damage. Right? He's invincible. But what if we didn't try to kill him? What if we just sent him up in the air and kept him up there? Could we come up with a draw? Oh, okay. Some of you guys got him. And now all you gotta do is keep them there. <laughs> Perfect. 
I don't actually know if they could just send him to the stratosphere. Like maybe a fall could kill him or the wind could take him off the map. That would help a whole lot. Just don't let him get back up for the love of Christ. <laughs> well, at the very worst, I think this is a guaranteed draw. Unless they run out of balloons and have to make a trip back to the party favor store. Oh, 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 um, guys, guys, more balloons. We need more, more balloons in the enemy, not in our teammates. Okay, this this is not gonna go according to plan. Just get him off the map, okay? I'm sure he can fall to death. Maybe if we have some way of blowing him? B blowing him, like like fans, not, not blowing him like, oh my God, okay. We're, we're gonna have to try something else. <laughs> it was a good idea. My first instinct was to go with something like the fan bearer or, or the shouter, you know, something that can hit him with a gust of wind once he's on the balloon and just have him sail off the edge of the map. But we might want to try something a little bit more aggressive, something with a little bit more propulsion. You know, the firework archer might be able to get the job done. Actually, in all reality, we can use the fan bearer as well if we really want to. <laughs> we'll just get everybody in there. I get the feeling you guys might shoot the fan bear. Oh, oh, okay. Um, did we hit him with anything? Really need him to, to be hit with. So good, good, there. Now, now hit him with the rockets. He's not really moving as much as I had hoped. Guys, I, I, I need to see more movement to quote Ninja. <laughs> this is not going according to plan. He's punching people very hard. Come on, come on, the edge of the map. Right there, right there, you're so freaking close. <laughs> Just keep in formation and hit him with a rocket or two. Oh no, 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 yes, 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 blow him. <laughs> the fan bears are still going. I didn't realize any of them were alive. He does not want to move in any kind of controllable direction, he just kind of has the ability to fly. Like, look at him, he's, he's forcing his way around in the air on the balloons. <laughs> this is unbearable. This might be a complete waste of time, but if there's any other unit that I've tried out that I've found to be strangely overpowered, it's the Swordmaster. They kind of Dragon Ball Z blink in and out of existence. They throw a crazy amount of swords. So maybe we can just light up One Punch Man and keep him pinned down. Or I just want to see anything except this much punishment. Look at all those glowing swords. <laughs> Go ahead and hit him with everything you've got. Something is happening. I can confirm that things are happening. What exactly? Um, not sure. Well, we lost in style. I don't know how I tricked myself into trying to beat this idiot again, but it, it, it just it pisses me off. You can't have an invincible unit in a game like this. There has to be a way to beat him. And there are a bunch of different ways to beat units that I haven't tried. Launching him off the map was one, but I don't know if we tried to freeze him or not. If I use enough ice archers, would I be able to freeze him solid? Because I'm pretty sure they don't take damage. It's just they freeze solid and they're considered dead. We don't even have to just use ice archers. Come to think of it, we could also use Uller. Where are you, Uller? <laughs> there you are. Gonna get a whole bunch of you as well and pray that you um, probably shouldn't have you guys lined up in front of one another. You're kind of idiots. What are the odds that's gonna work? We might also need balloon archers to hold him still, to be honest, because at least that did something. Let's see, oh, oh, he dodged it all. He's, oh, no, he can't dodge everything. Good, good, we're hitting him with something. He's, uh, kind of, fro he's not even a little frozen. He didn't care, not in the slightest. We hit him with so many divine frozen axes and his nips didn't even get hard. That, that is just unacceptable. I have more frozen units than he does. <laughs> oh no. The axes are hanging out of his body. We're definitely not missing. He just doesn't care. I don't think holding him still would make any difference either. 
Hmm. Yeah, might need to call it. He's completely invincible. Unless... No, no, he's invincible. <laughs> oh, we were making progress there for a second. God, I hate this thing. You know what, I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. And it was kind of important for me to test out the limits of One Punch Man today because next episode, I'm gonna be running a tournament. This is something that a lot of you guys have requested of me. It's not gonna be a unit tournament. It's gonna be a faction tournament. 16 teams are gonna face off against each other. It's gonna be really fun. I'm gonna try to do it as soon as possible. It's just an idea that I have, but it's gonna take a lot of work. So if you guys wanna see that, as always, be sure to leave a like on this video, let me know, and try to give me some ideas for how I can beat this thing, because I just, oh, I, I, I want it so badly. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.